let's talk about smoking. Okay. And there are very many people who have been wanting to stop smoking. And they have tried, <coughs> they have failed, the medics and the industry have come up with alternative, safe alternatives to smoking that help you get out of smoking. Now there's been a conversation that those safe alternatives have become the main source mm. of highs for many people who are getting into uh, getting this high, the nicotine high for the first time. But then their doctors were saying, my friend, we have to balance this conversation. And that's why we invited them to hear from them. Dr. Michael Karioki is a consultant pediatrician. He's an epidemiologist and he's a researcher. And he's also joined by Dr. Nick Otisia, who's also a consultant pediatrician and researcher. Good morning, Dr. Aris. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the hot seats of the Situation Room. Dr. Karioki, you've been here before. Yes. Dr. Motisia hasn't been here before. Yeah. Daktari. Thank you. Yeah. How does it feel? Ah, feels good. Mm -hmm. Feels good to be here. Uh, I think I've been missing this. Yeah, but okay. Bas. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Uh, You're right where you need to be today. Yes. City will welcome you with the day's proverb. This week the proverbs are from the, the Republic of Burundi. Okay. Gentlemen, would you guys tell me the capital of Burundi? Doctor? Bunjumbura. Okay, Doctor? Bujumbura. Well, you're both right in a sense because that is the commercial capital. The administrative capital mm -hmm. called, it's, called, Giti. it's called Gitega. <laughs> Not with the Giti. Not with the Giti. <laughs> 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 or Gikampura for that yeah, matter. It is Gitega and not Katanga. <laughs> yes. Okay. And not Itega. Not Gitega. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. The proverb. Mm. Don't tell more fairy tales when the child has gone to sleep. Don't tell more fairy tales when a child has gone to sleep. Mm -hmm. Dr. Karyuki, what's the interpretation of this proverb? Well, simply, uh, what will they hear? They're already asleep. So <laughs> 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 that's, that's the simplest explanation. Hakuna haja ya kujusumbua. Kabisa. Hakuna haja. We washa uyo. Dr. Nick, what's your interpretation of it? Yeah, if uh, the child has gone to sleep, you don't have a audience. And so... Uh, you don't need to keep talking to yourself. You better think about it than saying it. Mm. Yeah, so you are spending a lot of energy on it, but the one, your target, is not there. Mm. Yeah. What's the lesson here? The lesson is we should have our audience present to receive the correct, to receive the message, and hopefully the right time, so that they are not asleep, they be awake. Mm. Okay. We have an audience that's listening to us and I'm sure some of them are in the Ministry of Health and you released a press <coughs> statement um, some two days ago uh, last week and uh, I'm gonna read some two or three paragraphs from it lawmakers risk missing a golden opportunity to save lives and reduce the public health burden caused by cigarette smoking if they launch an indiscriminate and ill-informed offensive against safer alternatives harm reduction specialists have warned the experts were responding to an announcement by public health principal secretary mary Mudoni that she intends to wipe out nicotine products dr michael karaoke secretary general of the harm reduction society said alternative nicotine products like regulated vapes and oral pouches are scientifically proven to be far less harmful than cigarettes and they're the most successful method of helping smokers to quit. Regulation of these products is, of course, necessary to protect children and the youth. However, the regulations should be evidence-based and proportionate to the risks posed after taking into consideration the smokers who need these therapeutic products. Okay. So, first of all, you belong to a society that's calling itself Harm Reduction Society. Okay. You are here to talk about alternatives to cigarette smoking. Let's start with what is Harm Reduction Society, Bona Secretary General. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Harm Reduction Society <coughs> is a group or an association 
of uh, like-minded uh, doctors uh, and the whole purpose of the society was to try and reduce harm or what we call mitigation of harm in the areas of tobacco, alcohol, pesticides and cannabis through evidence-based approaches use of what we call pragmatic approaches because we realize that uh, uh, burning of products does not work it has been tried before we have a lot of history uh, littered all the way back uh, when societies tried to burn some of these products and uh, they realize that uh, these products are not easily put away from those who want to use them. Mm. And uh, the best way to go about it is to regulate. <clears throat> I'll give you a very good example. Uh, in the US, uh, during the moonshine era, there was a prohibition of alcohol. Mm. And uh, what that brought out was rampant, you know, black market, people were using alcohol. Mm. Uh, then we had infiltration of gangs. And of course, we know the famous Al Capone. He was one of those gangs that mm. uh, infiltrated the industry. Until the US government realized that we cannot ban this product, we must regulate. Mm. And uh, that is where regulation comes in. Mm. Coming back to Africa, during COVID, South Africa tried to ban uh, tobacco. Uh, of course, there was the argument that uh, tobacco smoking was spreading COVID, mm. though it was not scientifically proven. And the government realized that people were still smoking and the black market had thrived mm. tremendously. And what did they do? They said, no, we have to go back to regulation. And the whole idea is to reduce the harm associated with these products. Harm reduction is not a new concept. It has been with us. When you wear a seat belt as you drive, that's a harm reduction tool. You're prone to causing an accident. You're prone to hitting a tree or a ditch, falling into a ditch. But the moment you strap that seat belt, you reduce the harm. We have a very good example in this country whereby IV drug users are given something equivalent to what they are using. Uh, for example, the cocaine users, opiate users. We have the famous Ministry of Health run uh, methadone clinics. Mm -hmm. Methadone is actually a, something that looks like opiate. And when that uh, program was introduced, people were like, how can you give these people something? I mean, you will get them addicted. But soon they realized that uh, it was a public health intervention that was geared towards reducing the harm of mm. drug use. Mm. On top of that, they even gave uh, IV drug users clean syringes. And people are like, are you not promoting you know, the use of IV drugs? Are you not promoting bad behavior? But from a public health perspective, it proved to be right because the public health gains far much outweighed uh, because there was reduction in the spread of HIV. Mm. They were able to get these people together and introduce them to rehabilitations. Mm. And that is essentially what we are trying to say. We are trying to say uh, for the tobacco users, the alcohol users, the cannabis users, pesticide use, we must come up with harm reduction strategies. Uh, and vapes and pouches are part of those strategies. Absolutely. They are part of the harm reduction strategies for tobacco. Mm. Uh, simply because these are safer alternatives. Uh, for the e-cigarettes, they have been proven beyond reasonable doubt that when you put smokers on electronic cigarettes, regulated electronic cigarettes, mm. and you follow them up, there is a very high chance, as you combine it with psychotherapy, mm. that this person will quit smoking. And that formed the famous program in the <coughs> UK 
run by the UK government, funded by UK taxpayers, called the Swap to Stop program, whereby the UK government is targeting a million smokers. There are six million smokers in England. So they said phase one will target a million smokers, swap their combustible cigarette with a regulated e-cigarette. Mm. We follow them up through Stop Smoking Services Department under mm. NHS. And the whole idea is how do we assist this smoker get away from this tobacco? There's a famous else. saying that says smokers smoke for the nicotine, but they die from the tar. Mm. and other carcinogenic substances. <laughs> mm. That saying was said by the father of harm reduction, Dr. Michael Rasa, who was a psychiatrist. And he's the one who coined harm reduction strategies in the field of tobacco. Okay. Dr. Mutisi, I want to yes. bring you here. Yes. Let's look at this. <clears throat> alternatives yes that are then available in the market yes so we've been told that e-cigarettes are an alternative mm. we've been told that nicotine pouches mm. are an alternative uh, vapes are an alternative what are these things yeah let's start with the nicotine pouch what is the nicotine pouch yeah thank you uh, let me clarify something very clearly that nicotine pouches have not been shown to be an alternative to a smoker. We don't have data on that. Mm -hmm. But there's a new publication by the New England Journal that e-cigarettes that have therapeutic nicotine, that is nicotine that is medicinal, mm -hmm. similar nicotine in our nicotine replacement therapies, these are drugs that are in our pharmacies, mm. regulated and approved by a pharmacy and poison board. That this nicotine uh, electronic cigarettes have been found and proven to be helpful and they can help a smoker put down a cigarette and use them and the dose is tapered down over time. Mm. And they are hooked off from the addiction of smoking. And for us to get this, we must look at the science. Even before we get to the products, because mm. Mm. if we miss the science, then this story remains to be a story that will, kept being t will keep being told every other day. What is the problem in smoking? One, it's nicotine addiction. That is the elephant in the room. Nicotine addiction. Mm -hmm. Once you are addicted to nicotine, you, you are not able to leave your cigarette. Nicotine is not a cigarette and is not tobacco. Nicotine is found in the tomatoes that we eat every day. Mm. Nicotine in smaller quantities, that is, is found in the other vegetables in smaller quantities and in other forms. So when you are burning a cigarette, it's a behavior that you are doing because of your nicotine addiction. Mm. That you must get clearly. So if you're addicted to nicotine, you have physical and psychological dependence. Mm. So if you are physically addicted, every time you try to miss a cigarette, you crave for it and you get withdrawal symptoms and you go back to burning the cigarette. And as my colleague has said very clearly, nicotine will not kill you. That is a therapeutic level, mm. but burning the cigarette will kill you so the other part is psychological dependence that is the behavior you have a behavior that you are used to so for us to treat a smoker to quit smoking we must handle physical dependence and psychological dependence for the physical dependence we must taper down the nicotine level okay that is why we are saying safer alternatives that's why they come in now mm. so the safer alternatives include one nicotine replacement therapies so you tell a smoker, put down your cigarette, get a nicotine patch that is therapeutic. What does the patch do? Yes. So the patch, you apply it on your skin. <laughs> and patch is not pouch. No, patch is not pouch. Okay. Yes. A patch. So for the patch, you, taper, you, you start, you put the, the patch on your system. You will not have withdrawal symptoms to look for the cigarette. 
Okay? Mm. But then I must taper down the <coughs> nicotine level in the patch. So I, there, there are doses. Yes, they come in a 21 milligram patch, 14 milligram patch, and a 7 milligram patch. If I don't taper down, you will be addicted to the patch. And these patches are not risk free. We must make it very clearly. They are less harmful, but they are not risk free. Mm. Because you may have a bit, if you are addicted to them, you will have tachycardia and there are risk of other illnesses. However, mm. let me clarify this nicotine doesn't cause cancer. And that should be very clear. There's a misinformation that nicotine causes cancer. It is not true. So nicotine will not kill you. Nicotine will not give you cancer. Uh -huh. Is nicotine harmful? Yes. Yes. Nicotine is harmful to the one who is not using it. Mm. If you are already addicted to it, we are looking at reducing your harmful your harm mm. from get from from when you are using that product. Okay, that's why we are saying you must taper down the dose. So, and there are other products. It's not only nicotine replacement therapies that have been proven. That's why we are saying therapeutic electronic cigarettes. And the the evidence is the United Kingdom is given as you say they are smokers. Okay. Yes. So it sounds like this need to be, they should not be over the counter. They should not be over the counter. You should In go fact, to a physician, a physician yes, for who then prescribes yes. and walks the journey with you. Yes. That okay. is the best setting. So then, not what, are, what are vapes? Uh -huh. Vapes, like in our setting, let me just clarify in our setting. We have electronic cigarettes that are in our setting that are not regulated. Mm. That is what we are calling vapes. Vapes are having nicotine levels that are even lethal. There's a nicotine level, if you get to 50 milligrams, in fact, you, once you're above 20 milligrams, you're getting into lethal or toxic levels of nicotine. And you use that, your heart will run very fast. And you can even get a cardiac arrest. But you said nicotine will not kill you. Yes, you in, in therapeutic. Time? That's why I'm using the term therapeutic doses. Nicotine is in tomatoes. We eat tomatoes every day. It is not killing us. Nicotine is in our vegetables, but there are doses that are lethal. Okay. Yes. That should be clear. Because if you don't get the science, we will not be able to digest this topic well. Okay. Yes. What did you call this alternative? What? Safer alternative. Safer alternative. Yes. And is vaping or are vapes in this safer alternative yes. bracket? Yes. Regulated, regulated therapeutic vapes. Not the vapes that we have in our market. So vape is e-cigarette. E-cigarette. Okay. The, the, the term vape, the term therapeutic I'm using is because of the, the content of nicotine. We must clarify that. Mm. If the content is similar to a nicotine patch, and we are scientists and we must get that clear. If it is similar to that therapeutic level that is approved by World Health Organization, approved mm. to be used as, a, as an alternative to help as a harm reduction strategy, that way it is, a, that way that it will fit the context. However, if the vape is like what we are having out there. One, unregulated. Number two, mostly containing lethal doses of nicotine, then is not therapeutic. So that is not a safer alternative. We must make, so that means the vape in the UK is not the vape that we are having in our market. That should be clear because for them it is under NHS. It All is right. under their ministry regulated. And it's only given to you. It's given to a smoker. But as with you a can access, with a you see, that's the best thing. Then you taper down. Okay. Yes. What did the principal secretary for health talk about? <clears throat> she was talking about these things that are available in the market. You yeah. walk into a market, you walk into a chemist, you walk into a supermarket, yeah. and you'll find nicotine pouches yeah. being sold yeah. and of various brand names. Yeah. Or you'll find people smoking the e-cigarettes. Yeah. These are the vapes, yeah. you know, presented in various different ways. Yeah. So all these that we are seeing in the market are unregulated. Yes. And therefore likely to be harmful. Yes. And those should not be in the market. That's why we are saying mm. we need a new regulation. Okay. We are working with the 2007 Tobacco Control Act. And back in 2007, we didn't have e-cigarettes in the market. Mm. They are, these are new novel products that are not being regulated by that act of parliament. Mm. And that's why we are calling forth for regulation. It should not be like a business, mm. like you're just importing and selling in a supermarket. There should be regulations. Yeah. Okay. We are uh, hosting two doctors in the Situation Room this morning. Dr. Michael Karioki is a consultant, pediatrician, epidemiologist, and a researcher, and the Secretary General 
of the Harm Reduction Society. His deputy is Dr. Nick Muticia, who is also a consultant, pediatrician and researcher as well. He will tell us why pediatricians are <laughs> concerning themselves with smoking. <laughs> CT. Well, what I hear mm. beyond the safer methods and uh, the therapeutically safe alternatives is business. Because someone manufactures cigarettes, it's a business. People get addicted. Guaranteed business. Guaranteed. Now, now for life. Mm -hmm. You then come in the therapists mm -hmm. with the alternatives, which essentially are tobacco products in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And then in commerce enters and suddenly it's prolific. It's everywhere and people are producing their own things and they're manufacturing. I, I keep wondering, they, where is the discussion about people not even starting to smoke? Because if you don't smoke, then you don't really need to be weaned out of it. Mm. But where's the discussion of simply going cold turkey? I speak as somebody who was a smoker. Yes, uh, th thank you very much for that question. Historically, uh, cold turkey uh, has been shown not to work. Uh, cold turkey is when you tell a smoker now, hey, look, uh, go and stop smoking. Mm. Start reducing the number of cigarettes that you're smoking. No, just stop. Just don't, stop. Don't even reduce. Stop. Just stop. Mm. Yeah, cold stop. turkey. Cold turkey has serious health effects, what we call withdrawal symptoms, simply because you have been addicted to nicotine. And if you suddenly stop, science has shown that you will get withdrawal symptoms. You will get the cravings. You will look for that product. Just like alcoholics, smokers are addicted to nicotine. So if you are doing 10 or 20 cigarettes, a packet or two, it is practically impossible. It is scientifically not possible to just stop smoking. How many were you doing, City? Three packets. Three packets a day? Yes, the time when I actually stopped, realized I needed to stop, mm. I could smoke three packets a day. Mm. And which, which one day did you say you were going to stop? I tried Was several, it several no, times? I, I tried several times. The mm. time I stopped for five years, went back again. Okay. In the in that, that that first time when you stopped for five years, yes, did you stop within a day, or was it a within, was it a conversation that you were having with yourself? You know, no, I had a conversation with myself. You, 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 and you're and reducing then from said, three. No, I didn't reduce. Mm. I had a conversation, then said, "On this day, this is what I will do." In fact, when I stopped finally, mm. I realized that if I stop going to the places I go to, where I will drink and smoke, I will likely not stop. So I didn't throw away my cigarettes. I would actually walk with my cigarettes. I would have them in the car. And if I was meeting with my friends, I would have it on the table. I just didn't smoke it. When I did that for a week or two, I figured I've kicked the habit. I do not need to bother anymore. That's mm. when I gave away the cigarettes to those who wanted to smoke. Mm. Yes. You're not scientifically proven. Mm. <laughs> You're not a case study. <laughs> <You're not. laughs> well, the, 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 what the doctor is saying is true mm. because cold turkey is difficult for most people mm. but the withdrawal is there even when you don't smoke for a while because you have to keep feeding this particular monster see now when you stop the craving is because you haven't had your fix mm. now my thinking was I'll never stop so long as I am minimizing it, you'll minimize it and something will happen and you'll simply go back. Mm. My thinking then was just stop, just cut it out. But then the truth is I don't think it is that easy. Where? CT, three packets a day. Yeah, see. Surely go more, It's not that. It's my, <laughs> it's, 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 it's my chest. I, you'd wake up at night and you can't breathe. Yeah. You find your chest is constricted yeah. and, and, and you're wondering, why am I doing this to myself? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then you cough. And by the way, that cough doesn't fully disappear. Right. No. Long after you, I don't mind, it's decades since I stopped smoking, there's always like a cough. Mm. When the weather changes a little bit and it gets slightly cold, my throat is constantly irritated and you're constantly coughing. Mm. So 
the after effects of smoking are well, you know it when you stop. When you smoke, you don't feel it. It's when you stopped, then you realize what you actually, the harm that you've done to yourself. Mm. So, I mean, it's, I think it's interesting. I think it's always very good to pepper then these personal experiences to ground what it is that we're actually talking about. Mm. So when we talk about reducing the harm related with the product and we're saying that regulation has to happen, and if we're looking at Kenya specific as a market, um, I'm not sure what the numbers are. I mean, we have the numbers from the UK, 6 million, yeah, three um, million three, you know, Kenya. 3 million in Kenya. Smokers. So the burden is quite something because yes. we're talking about shh, more than a tenth of the population. Mm isn't it Correct. right mm. yeah talking about more than a tenth of the population and when we say this we're not talking about i know with with alcohol you have teetotalers so i don't know if you have the same thing with smoking where somebody's just gonna have a cigarette when they're doing whatever but if this three million we're talking about folks who are addicted right so if we say that there ought to be regular where we're inviting the regulation conversation is when we're talking about the safer alternatives right i keep yes. losing that term is that it yes yes okay go, 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 correct we're talking about the safer alternatives right. and then we're saying that then there must be regulation invited to then make sure that these safer alternatives then can be essentially brought into the market and used. Mm. Who would be the body or the organ tasked with the regulation of this and then to say, all right, folks, go ahead. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, let me begin by saying that uh, uh, the tobacco act of 2007 uh, was largely derived from uh, world health organization's framework convention for tobacco control and uh, the fctc from who has clearly defined what tobacco control is mm -hmm. you know it's a range of supply demand and harm reduction strategies and let me say that uh, when we are calling for regulation and amendment of this act it is simply because one our act has not defined what tobacco control is it was deliberately omitted uh, for reasons that we don't know and secondly we must realize that in the who's fctc mm. uh, harm reduction strategies have been recognized in fact it was a very hot debate in the recent uh, conference of parties held in panama uh, the other day whereby uh, member states who have adopted harm reduction strategies wanted to know uh, what approaches are these that uh, when WHO was writing the FCTC what did they mean by demand supply and harm reduction strategies can we get a clear definition of this and uh, this was left to the member states Kenya is a signatory to that and uh, what we are trying to say is that even as we repeal, even as we amend these laws, spearheaded by the Ministry of Health, we need to recognize that uh, we must clearly define uh, tobacco control as defined in the World Health Organization's FCTC and go further ahead and define what are these harm reduction strategies uh, that uh, WHO was talking about. and begin with the WHO recommended harm reduction strategies of nicotine replacement therapies, the patches, uh, the lozenges, the mm -hmm. gums, the inhalers, the pharmacotherapeutics, uh, the varenicline, and other drugs that are beyond the reach of smokers to assist them to quit smoking. Uh, and that is the conversation that we need to have uh, in as far as harm reduction is can, concerned. Can I ask? Yes. In some of these more developed countries, let's talk about the UK. When doctors prescribe these safe alternatives, it's in the same way that you would be, you as medical practitioners would prescribe medicine. Yes. Meaning, again, it's at your cost. You, the person who wants to stop smoking. Yes, it's at your cost, and, and that's why the UK government has come into play because they've realized that uh, they must handle the cost as a government to assist the smokers to quit. L let me introduce something to this discussion. Mm -hmm. Most people who smoke like smoking. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, even when they say they want to stop, they still like smoking. Mm -hmm. My argument is this. How often is it? Yes, you'll say we'll say it's addiction, but 
when you really want to move away from something you will not leave anything to chance you will do everything within your means to ensure that you stop wouldn't you yes but when you introduce alternatives it gives you the option to to play pretend m- 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 meaning I've got this electronic thing I'm puffing away but I'm not actually not causing myself harm mm-hmm. your research is statistically mm. how many what is the data on people who've used these alternatives who are one smokers probably chain smokers and have actually stopped and not for a day or two or a year or five years have stopped quit kabisa done with so uh let me clarify something again because we need to uh, get this very clear mm. that safer alternatives don't work alone i want to clarify that mm. that the addiction is physical and psychological yes yes so as you are provided with a safer alternative you are undergoing behavioral therapy so that you can hook off the liking of the smoking mm. that behavioral therapy is very key and some 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 of the safer alternatives includes drugs that have been proven to work and they are sold as medication for cessation of smoking and even them they don't really work alone so the latest research has shown that in addition to prescription of drugs including the nicotine replacement therapies and medication as drugs that are given to put down your cigarette there's a need for you as a smoker to use uh, in addition to use the electronic cigarette that is therapeutic that has led to the most cessations and in fact it is published in the new england journal mm. that article it's available for everyone to to see it's not an individual you know cochrane studies have been done yes there is evidence that nicotine replacements work mm. but there has been <clears throat> superior evidence that showing if we had and if you think about it for the smoker there is what you are addicted to the cigarette you are addicted to you have you have been given an alternative that is safer that already health wise is a big milestone to yourself because it's preventing you from having a lot of communicable diseases including cancer mm. and then when you go, you, are, you go through therapy you are able to dislike and for example the way the uk they have stop smoking services we need to have that we know we have rehabilitation centers in kenya where an alcoholic is taken and they are helped out but smokers we need to have a unit that is specific for smokers also because it is all its addiction medicine the smoker should know that if i'm held by this if i have tried and i can quit smoking well and good for you and as am reduction society we support that we support that if you can quit today go ahead mm-hmm. our aim is for people to quit smoking our aim is not to promote safe alternatives and mm-hmm. that should be clear it is just that safe alternatives have been become the evidence that if you can't quit on your own there is then an alternative for you yes yeah, the <coughs> addiction the terrible things to deal with mm. and they're difficult things to deal with and you're right without psychotherapy well let me call psycho social therapy because a lot of uh, many of these habits that we acquire have to do also with the company mm-hmm. yes the the company helps reinforce the habit now in someone who's grown up everything we're saying makes perfect sense but what about in younger people who still think that all these things are fun and they're good and they're fashionable and they're hip all the things you've mentioned whether it is electronic cigarettes whether it is vape yes the, 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 the dangers that we speak of they actually don't see it at least even if they do they don't internalize mm. the full consequences of it yeah so for for our youths and adolescents these products should be out of reach today these products are 
they are able to access today freely in a supermarket very easily very it's not easily even controlled like alcohol it's not regulated mm. they can buy they can use we are saying it's time it's a wake up call let's regulate these products they sh the youth should not be able to access and in fact the uk as they did that program they invested a lot on regulating to ensure their youth will not access including putting in penalties who prescribed who allowed the who sold to the youth who that needs to be there so that we can regulate so that that population because that is not the target population mm. and we should not use that regulation in biasness so that we say since the youth are at risk of getting the smoker should not access because that has been the biggest debate mm. yeah if the smoker can access and we begin from can you quit quit if you can't there's a safe alternative but Dr. yes I think if you, you've already said that yeah. what we are seeing in the market is beyond even what the smoker should access. Yes. Right? True. So the whole here, idea here is blanket ban of these things that we are seeing in the market. If a smoker is to access anything, they are accessing medication. Mm -hmm. And already there is medication mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. And there is prescribed medication. Yeah. That nicotine pouch comes with exact amount of nicotine in it right mm -hmm. and you said it's that with what 20 yes 20 21 the patch yeah the, the patch. patch yes the patch yes pouch is not an alternative pouch there's no data that shows that it's an alternative. local data we don't have okay but for the patch we have that and that's why we are here to speak as scientists we are not guessing we are talking of published work okay yes and you've also told us many of the e-cigarettes that we see yes being smoked out here yes are many times above even the recommended level correct of nicotine correct. so they should be out of the market correct then i say i support the ps when she says finish these things from the market yes so the challenge and let me correct you there and then now you come and say you're a smoker you want to quit smoking seek Smoke medical one. help yeah so the challenge now the doctors uh -huh. will give you mm -hmm. medicine mm -hmm. medication yes what is considered this uh, is regulated by the pharmacy and poisons board yeah. like all the others like all the other drugs that they prescribe for you yes Senor. that's the best controlled setting yes. but in reality yeah. if we're looking at the reality and the consequence of the reality yeah if we ban <coughs> the product then black market will thrive black market will thrive and and we will not be able to control that will become the biggest challenge. So what should we do? Regulate. Regulate, Regulate what? So that the product... This harmful thing. The, the, no, the, the harmful thing should be withdrawn from the market. Okay. We're not saying the harmful thing. Mm. But we are saying there are regulations like on tobacco. Let it, let it show the sign that it is harmful. Okay. Let it be out of reach of children. Okay. No promotion and advertisement. There are those WHO approved regulations that are supposed to be there. Okay. That's what we are calling the regulation. And then the nicotine content should be therapeutic. But... We are not saying that the harmful one is what we are regulating. No, we are not saying we are regulating the harmful one. The harmful one is already toxic. That one should be withdrawn from the market. But then, as you withdraw, you you will. It's it's not advisable mm. to say that all alternatives. You are you are you are you are getting a blanket that you are you are removing them from the market. It will become a challenge with the black market. Mm. But if we can control, which will be a difficult situation. Because we are humans and people tend to look for what is prohibited. At the, at the same time, we, we are also saying that uh, <coughs> what is regulated, like the nicotine replacement therapies, the pharmacotherapeutics, mm. are beyond the reach of smokers. Mm. Most of us. Yes. Mm. A week's dose of the nicotine replacement therapies will set you back anything between five to th six thousand shillings a week mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they're more and expensive than the thing itself absolutely yes. they are very yeah. expensive the pharmacotherapeutics the varenicline will set you back anything between 10 to fifteen thousand a week mm -hmm. and you need a minimum of 12 weeks to undergo therapy mm -hmm. and we found out that one of the reasons was because these nicotine replacement therapies had been grouped together with other nicotine substances like tobacco and we are telling the ministry we must make these products affordable 
Otherwise, we will not be able to assist our smokers to quit, even with the nicotine replacement therapies that are WHO approved, that are Pharmacy and Poisons Board approved. Affordability is key for this product. And not insurance covered. Mm. They are not covered by any insurance. I have a twin prong question. Huh? Yeah. Addiction. Yeah. The scientific definition of it. What is it that resecates your brain? Are there people who are predisposed towards addiction in the cigarette? What is it? What are the ingredients in the cigarette that do the thing in your brain that now makes you have this compulsive need to want this? And can you consider this a, a form of mental disorder? Yes, uh, addiction in very simple terms for tobacco is uh, when the nicotine stimulates some of the receptors in your brain and the brain releases a happy hormone what we call dopamine so when you smoke the nicotine in the tobacco will go into your brain stimulate these receptors and, and let me say to our young people the younger you are the more the stimulation the brain of a child will stop growing at the age of 24 to 25 years more and more receptors are being added so when you get exposed to this product very early on there is a very high likelihood that your addiction dependence is likely to rise as you move on with your ear you know as, as you grow older, older. And that's why these products are extremely harmful to young people. That nicotine is what stimulates what we call the reward center in your brain. And you want more and more of that product. You want to have that happy feeling. Yes, mm. you want to have that. We call it euphoric, euphoric. Mm. or happy feeling. Mm. Not knowing that in essence, this product is actually harming your developing brain. Which also tells me that this product can be, actually be engineered to increase the stimulation yes absolutely how by raising the dose a very simple thing raise the dose that's why some of the products that are out there in the market have lethal doses of nicotine once you raise the dose just like alcohol once you raise the dose your alcohol addiction will go up once you raise the dose and that's why in part of the regulation we must have SOPs for these products, standard operating procedures for these products that we must have a regulated product. It must be within this particular amount of strength of nicotine, must target the smokers who want to quit, cannot be bought by those who are young. And uh, just to add on that, uh, NACADA released some statistics recently and the nicotine or tobacco initiation age in this country six years what mm -hmm. correct that's the nakada statistics and part of the six reason year old kids are smoking yes, yes. they're exposed to tobacco and one, one of okay. the reasons there's a difference yes. initiation are they exposed to tobacco or are they actually smoking using tobacco mm. they're smoking the yes, initiated yes. tobacco okay. use okay wow and because this is not just secondhand smoke, which mm. we know, of course, is also a danger, but we're saying that they're actually smoking. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It, it actually begins with the secondhand smoke because mm. one of the reasons is uh, when the parent who is at home mm. sends the young son cigarettes and comes and smokes the cigarette at home, that child will be exposed. Yeah. And, and the next seen... time, this child will want to know what is my dad smoking. It's a cool thing, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Charis, thank you very much for joining us today. And the information that you've created. Dr. Michael Karioki is the Secretary General of the Harm Reduction Society and is a consultant pediatrician, epidemiologist and a researcher. Dr. Nick Mutisi as well, a consultant pediatrician and a researcher. They've been talking to us about the safe alternatives. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.